Hello everyone. Welcome to my channel. It's Kim here. Um, today I thought I would do a little bit of a follow-up um, and tell you where I'm at. Um, this fabric here was gifted to uh, several different artisans uh, by Kim from uh, Vintage Lilac Memories and it is to use to create a journal. Now our original deadline was uh, June the 15th um, and she gave us an extension to June 30th ish um, and I haven't got very far but I you know it's in my head it's I just have to get it out now but it but it is in my head and so I thought I would kind of take you along with me on this journey as I put the cover together at least um, so that you can know that I'm actually working on it. You know, it's that thing where you, you have to be, uh, committed if, if you say you're going to do something right. So, so I figured, well, if I take you along with me as I work on this, maybe I have a better chance of getting it done <laughs> sometime soon, but you know, you know, there are a couple of us who are a little bit behind. So hopefully, hopefully I, I will be in good company for a while so that I can get mine finished. Um, so this is the beautiful fabric. You know, it's got the yellows, the blue, a, a lighter blue in here and kind of a mustardy dark yellow. So I've kind of decided on the fabrics that I want to use to complement this on the cover. Now I'm, I am going to save a little bit of this fabric for inside the journal to, um, to, uh, make spot collages and, um, just carry the colors right through. But I also found other fabrics to use and complement with this. So I thought I'd start out by showing you that. And I have this brown or mustardy colored, I should leave this where you can see it, right? I have this, it's a little bit darker, although there is a tiny little bit of it in some of these flowers here. It's a, a lining material. So I thought I would use this for the lining. Um, and it cracked me up because when I pulled it out of my stash, I, I, there was a little price tag on it still, and I had paid 15 cents for this piece of lining. Um, and it's cute. It's, it's kind of, a I think it's must be a cotton polyester. Uh, it's not super silky, um, but I think there's polyester in it, uh, as well. So this is what I'm going to use for the lining. And then I'll just get that out of the way for now into a ball. Okay. So then I found this, uh, shimmery blue lace in my stash that I thought would also complement this very nicely. The colors, there is that lighter blue in the flowers that it seems to match pretty good with. So I'm going to use some of this. Mm, I'm not sure on the cover, but definitely on the inside of the journal. And then I found this yellow elastic. Um, I thought this might make a really nice tie or something to go with it because the color is, is perfect. So I figured, well, I'll add that to the pile. I might even do, just use it without using it as an elastic and just stitch it onto the edge of pages or onto the edge of a pocket. Um, cause it does have kind of a finished edge on it here. I think this is, uh, I think they call this panty lace or something back in the day because um, it's it's finished on the one side and not on the other. So, so I think I'll use that. And then I had uh, I have one yard of this um, rolled roses trim and it's in that same mustardy color. And then I have this uh, small lace trim that again could be used um, in on the edges of the book or somewhere on the inside. It's it's very delicate and uh, not too thick of a ruffle, and the uh, the uh, flat edge here is is pretty flat, so I don't think it'll make too much of a difference in the journal. And then I have a couple of um, braided trims, uh, the gimp trim that I can use on the journal as well. The color again matches pretty good. Both of them actually would work well with it, both with the, the lining and with the, the, um, fabric itself. 
And then I have this blue velvet. So I think I'm going to make some millinery flowers um, to, to cluster on, on the edge of the book somewhere and maybe enhance with some other, yeah, I'm thinking some gold uh, metal embellishments to go with it, like a gold brooch perhaps, or something with these, with the blue flowers. And I'll, I'll probably use like either gold beads for the centers or um, maybe yellow beads for the centers to match it. I don't want it to be super yellow blue. Um, so I've chosen this to be the base of the cover. It's a brown. Um, it's a really nice, uh, lightly quilted fabric. Um, and it's it's a kind of a coffee brown, which I think would complement the uh, pages that would be on the inside. So this will be the outside cover and part of this will be incorporated into to the, the cover. Uh, I'm not quite sure yet what or how. I'm still undecided on that. But I have enough here to make two covers and I'm pretty sure um, if I'm thrifty with this fabric, because there is a lot here, I could make this also uh, to stretch it out for two covers. And if not, I still will have lots of this other material that I can use um, and, and uh, maybe do something different. But this is what I've chosen for the covers. And it's going to be a soft cover journal, but it'll have the um, um, envelope base. And this is a nine by 12 envelope that I'm using. So I just, I cut the one just to see how it would work. And this fabric had a little piece of a chunk taken out of it. So I really have to stay um, pretty close in line with the envelope and not go over too, too much. Although I may go over a little bit on one, one side or the other, but um, I have to pretty much stay in the confinements of this fabric and the envelope. Um, and the same with the second one. I think this one Oh, this one I have a little bit more, no, not much more, but a little bit more. So I may go a little bit further outside of the envelope because being a nine by 12, that really only allows for one signature. But if I can stretch it a little bit, I should be able to increase the spine to maybe about a two inch spine instead of a, you know, like a one inch. So, so I'm, I'm going to play around and see what I can do to, um, increase the sides a little bit just so I can, I can make it a bigger journal. Um, and then I found this fabric. Oh, I also have this yellow ribbon, so I might use that and make some fun trims with that. Um, and then I found this, uh, sorry fabric and this is all really intense beading on here. And it is yellow and there's little uh, clusters of beads throughout it. And I thought this might be a nice trim for the top of the journal. And I will have to fold this over because once you cut these beads, they will uh, unravel and, and I'll have beads everywhere. So I will have to stitch it first or stitch something to it so that the beads don't unravel, but I won't be able to do that until I actually have the covers done. I like the, the bases glued down to the, to the um, envelope and then stitch the lining on the inside. But I thought then I would kind of do a very raggy looking um, cut here to leave this hanging off of the book that's sort of my thought because I have the same trim on the other side and it's not quite as big, but I would use it for the second book. So then I would have the same kind of idea on the second one as well. So just to give you an idea, this is what my thought process looks like is that it will not quite, you know, it won't be this thick of course, but I don't really want it. I want it to be raggy looking and I'm going to pull some threads out of it and kind of make it messy uh, because I don't really want it to cover much of this, especially if I'm going to turn around and incorporate 
some of this back into the the book or the cover. So I don't know again what what I'm using yet. I'm I'm assuming I'm going to use this bigger blue piece because then it really brings out the blue. Um, but this will kind of sort of half cover it. Not really, because it's pretty sheer. So if, if you look at it this way, um, from the sheer part of, part of it, 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 you can see the, the book through it. And, and it won't be all the way to the bottom. It'll be just uh, this raggy thing that just kind of hangs off with a little bit of, um, you know, messy, fringy looking edges. Um, and so that's my thought process so far. Um, again, I don't know how I will incorporate putting some flowers and lace on here at this point, but we will see. Uh, I think for a closure, I'm going to stitch the closure into the journal cover uh, itself instead of trying to put something um, wrapped around the cover only because I don't know how I'm going to embellish this afterwards. And so I don't want this uh, thing that wraps around that might, um, you know, take away from the beauty of the, the finished cover, depending on what I've uh, come up with to collage on here. So I figured it's probably safer to just um, stitch something into the sides of the journal cover. And... Um, uh, this way it's done and, and it won't interfere with the, the book cover itself. As for the spine on the back, it'll depend on how far I stretch this book and whether or not I want to put something down the spine. Mm, I'll see. I, again, I'm still a little bit uh, unsure. But this is kind of where I'm going with this. While it was, you know, when I first looked at this fabric, I right away said um, Ukraine because th these are the colors of Ukraine colors. And so I thought I would do kind of a Ukrainian style of book. And so I was thinking sunflowers and a few other things, but mm, I'm kind of leaning away from that now. And I think I'm just going to go with a, a more um, boho um, travelers type of um, journal, you know, s sort of a... Um, gypsy style or, or uh, bohemian style and um, I'll just take it from there and sometimes the journal will you know it'll speak to me a little bit as well to help me decide um, as I go along and and you know I'll look at images of of uh, pretty ladies that I want to add in here and and see what else I come with up with along the way but um, so it's kind of more of a boho as a as a poor opposed to being an ethnic uh, Ukrainian style um, journal. So that's where I'm at. I also have this uh, piece of brown fabric. It's not um, very wide, but it is long. And I just thought this was another complement to the brown that I thought I could make some pockets with on the inside of the journal or do some, you know, belly bands and that kind of stuff with it. It's kind of um, a leather look, even though it's cotton. It's 100% cotton. There is a little bit of braided trim on here uh, with a silver and coppery brown thread going through it. I don't think that that makes a difference in the book. Uh, you know, it's not going to show up that much. And it might be another alternative for things for me to add um, into the journal uh, to embellish even further. So it might give me more options if I have this uh, brown in in the fabric and I'm still not 100% sure that I'll use it but it, it was just complementary to the colors and so I thought that's what I would work with. So that gives you an idea of how my journal is going to start and I you know I don't want to sit here and you know measure and look and I don't like measuring anyway I like to just go with it um, but I don't want to sit here and and bore you with me cutting up fabric and staring at it for 10 minutes to decide what I want to do or how I want to do it. So I think I will just come back and show you the progress as I go along. And I, you know, I would love your comp comments uh, on what I'm doing as well. Um, but it's just my way of, again, showing you the journal and that I am working on it and that I'm going to actually do two at the same time, like two covers. And then uh, you can watch me put it together as well. So it's going to be sort of a half tutorial, half progress uh, report as I go along. So I hope this was um, uh, 
valuable for you to see my my process i know i haven't done much of this kind of thing online to show you what i'm doing so this is kind of new for me to to share this part with you um so i hope you'll enjoy it and um again i uh have my sunday tutorial coming up at this point i don't know what it's going to be but that'll be the next one and just in case you are following the dates on this video, it is July 1st. Happy Canada Day to all the Canadians uh, celebrating our Canadian birthday. And on Monday, July the 4th, it will be um, Independence Day in the United States. So happy Independence Day for my our American friends and family. And uh, I wish you all a very creative day today or a, a, a festive day if you're out and about uh, celebrating. And I look forward to seeing all of you very soon. Okay, bye for now. Have a great day.